So welcome back to the Pick Up the Ford podcast. Today we're honored to have uh, Taylor Como on here. Um, he's a he's a bodybuilder that he did really well at the Toronto the Toronto qualifier, and that's really nice to have you on. And thanks for taking time on your day. No problem at all, fellas. Happy to be talking to you. Yeah. What guy? What like what guy into lifting in the first place? Sure. So I mean, me, I kind of started. I was always an athlete, so I was playing all kinds of sports growing up. Played hockey, soccer, you know, a um, little bit of everything. Hockey was kind of my main thing. Um, I'm about six two, six three, so I was always really tall and quite skinny. So I always wanted to work out to be bigger. So that's kind of how I ended up progressing into bodybuilding. So when I stopped playing hockey, um, I just kept working out. But instead of training for a sport, I trained for the purpose of just getting bigger and stronger. Um, and eventually people kind of started saying, Hey, Taylor, like you're kind of big, like you should do a show. And I was like, me, you think I'm kind of big? Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. okay. Um, and one of my best friends, a girl that he was seeing a few years ago, did her very first bikini show. Um, and I watched, um, that show that she did. And I walked into the auditorium and I was really like, okay, cool. This is awesome. I feel like I'm at home. Um, and since then that was in about 2015, I think. Um, and I watched that happen. It was like, cool. I'm doing a show. And then it just went from there. That's awesome. Yeah. What age did you like kind of tone into to bodybuilding rather than, uh, just like playing hockey and other sports? Um, for me, bodybuilding, it, it kind of just the lifestyle of it. Like I like yeah. routine. I like consistency. Um, and, and it's just, it kind of flows with my personality. Like I'm relatively introvert, introverted, despite I'm sure you guys have seen, you know, my stuff on social media, my Instagram yeah, videos from, yeah. from my personal TikTok, like it's kind of silly and dumb and stupid, but I'm relatively introverted and I prefer to just be alone and bodybuilding is a relatively solitary sport. So it's just, it's something that jived well with me. Um, and it just kind of, it just worked. It was just a, another goal, you know, my, my goals for hockey kind of ceased and it was just something to set your sights to um, that allowed me to continue to push myself towards and also just wanting to continue to be an athlete and be able yeah. to do athletic things when I could no longer participate in any athletic sports like that so I'm really like the same way because I that's why I love bodybuilding because it's like it's like a it's like a constant you know what I mean it's like every day it's kind of like the same thing and, it's, and it sounds boring but it's really like relaxing yeah yeah totally like yeah for me it's just it's it's something that translates into success in many other yeah. ways in life like you guys are relatively young still but being able to apply the skills that you learn and every day showing up and doing the things you need to do leads to results in the long run exactly it's like the discipline to like and you know it just you kind of do things that you don't really want to do but everything you put into it you get out yeah 100 percent I feel like seeing success in bodybuilding kind of gives you more positive outlook on, on the society. Like you can apply your work ethic and stuff to the real world. Sure. And totally. just make I mean, if you, if you think of some of the, the more successful bodybuilders, you know, whether it's in Canada or around the world, like you see some of these men and women, um, the people that kind of make it up to these, you know, upper rankings, they translate that into a business here and a business there. And it, and it just kind of teaches you so much more than what is implied by most of society seeing us and seeing these, you know, muscle bound people who are probably just so vain and so dumb. When in reality, a lot of folks are quite capable and quite entrepreneur, entrepreneurial and quite intelligent. Um, so when you kind of see that success, it can translate itself into other things for sure. Yeah. I think that's really like a, one thing social media has been good for Cause like back in like, like when I was a kid, like it was always kind of like people thought like bodybuilders, like meatheads and stuff like that. And I think, yeah. you know, yeah. and that's kind of what we try to do with the podcast as well. Kind of like get like a little look into people's lives and you know what I yeah. mean? Just like, oh, you should say, well, maybe there's more, you know? Yeah, totally. No, there's a lot more to it. I mean, of course, you know, there's always the bad seeds who are the traditional media. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, um, but, you know, there's definitely, definitely a diverse group of folks who are interested in bodybuilding for sure. Yeah, and I really respect like being able to like when you're popular like that, when you're an influencer, and then being able to translate that into like success in business and stuff. Like that's yeah. an awesome thing. I love like entrepreneurial stuff. So like when you get, I mean, obviously, I think when you're like a big influencer like that, you should try to like like you did. You should try to convert that into something that can make you money with business or something Absolutely. like that. Yeah. In in the modern world, it's so easy to be able to translate something that quite literally is your passion. You know, your favorite thing in the world could be tiddlywinks, and you could make a great living putting out content related around to that stuff. You know, it's always so easy to do as long as you actually enjoy what you're doing. It's really like a good opportunity that basically you can have any interest you want and there's going to be other people that have it and you can just kind of. Yeah. yeah. 
It's like at the end of the day, money's important, but obviously, like you're not, you don't want to just go sit in, sit in an office all day and do yeah. something you don't want to do. So totally, yeah. I I when I so I have a business degree from St. Mary's, um, and initially I always knew I wanted a business, but kind of getting out of school, I had kind of an in between stage where I was kind of trying to think, oh, do I want to work at a bank? Do I want to work at a gym? Um, and all the like the financial sector jobs, the bank jobs and stuff, just like I'd be asleep at my desk if I would have ever gotten those jobs. So I'm yeah. so glad I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what was like the decision? Like, I'm going to own a supplement store. How did that kind of come about? Sure. So, I mean, you know, like I said, I, uh, I stopped playing hockey uh, when I got in university. Um, I, so my father owned businesses. That's what he did. Yeah. So I always knew that that's something that I wanted to do. I just didn't know what. Um, and then as I progressed into bodybuilding, you know, I found the industry more, saw what kind of the opportunities were. Um, and uh, so we almost five years ago now was when we initially opened um, the store. Um, but I met the gentleman who owns, there's four, well, there's three at the time, there's four Supplement Kings in Halifax, um, and actually beat the guy in a show that owns those stores. Um, <laughs> and uh, we kind of became good friends. And I used him as an opportunity to say, okay, well, I want to get into business. I really like this business. I was already buying all my stuff at Self and K anyway. Um, and then uh, the closest place to open a store was in Fredericton and just said, bam, all right, let's do it. Um, so it was just kind of blend of the two things. Like I said, like the passion of the fitness and bodybuilding lifestyle with wanting yeah. to build a business. And they just kind of came together into the into the current business. Yeah. Kind of like an opportunity to do something that totally. you know, yeah. I always wanted a business, but didn't really know. Yeah. So that's I'm awesome. very happy with it. Very, very, very happy to say the least. Yeah. Do you have any plans of like, is it, is it hard to franchise that further? Like, can you open one somewhere else? No, not at all. Um, there's a couple guys. So there's one guy, Trevor, um, who owns, he just opened his ninth store um, out oh, in cool. uh, Alberta and BC. Trevor's a couple years older than I am. He's doing very well. Um, but no, it's real. If you set a plan for yourself and that's what you want to do is expand, you can absolutely make it happen. Um, just for me, with the timing that we opened and then the COVID world happening. Oh, yeah. And then, it's, it's going to be a bit of a slower roll than what I wanted it to be, but I absolutely, if I, I definitely want to open a few more for sure. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. They just opened one in St. John. So I don't know yeah. who that was, but that's pretty cool. Yeah. No, they took my spot. Yeah, like, <laughs> oh, really? yeah. The guys that own the stores in Moncton opened that one. So I was a little mad about that, but Hey, it is funny because they, they, they opened that one. And they kind of closed down. There's another local one. They kind of yeah, closed that one. And there was like a local store. It's called like Synergy. They yeah. opened and everybody's yeah. going there for like a month. And then something and came, came and they just like. Supplement comes to town. Watch out. Everyone's toast. We're good. No, it's honestly true. Like <laughs> all the boys used to go to GNC and like Synergy. Yeah. Now it's like pure Supplement King. So yeah, it's kind of cool that way too. And I, and I love how you're like passionate with fitness and you're like, you're making, you're making, yeah, it, you're making long it. it's awesome. Yeah. It's fun. You know, it's, it's fun. You know, when I was a kid, you know, obviously we all looked up to people older than ourselves. Um, and for me, it's, it's enjoyable to pass on what I've learned over the years to anyone, not just young folks, but you know, older folks being able to make a difference in someone's life is actually very rewarding. If you're able to just provide one little tip or tidbit that can help someone lose, you know, 50 pounds or that can help someone gain, you know, 10 pounds of muscle. And regardless, they're just happier with the way they see themselves in the mirror. They feel better. It's actually quite nice. Yeah, I agree. Cause I mean, obviously like not that many people watch the podcast, but a little people and I'll, I'll hear people say, Oh, I did this and it was fun. It's just kind of, it's a good feeling, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Another thing, like, so you own a supplement king, you own a supplement king in Fredericton, but you're, I know you're also an online personal trainer. So that's another business that you kind of, you're something you're passionate about and you made that into a business. So what's that like yeah. doing online personal So training? that's a lot of fun. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's also very rewarding to be able to pass on the experiences and the knowledge to guys who are getting to get ready for their first shows. Um, so I just had a, a young guy, um, Tyler, compete in the States. Um, and he won his very first show. He won his novice class and he won his class as well. Um, and it's just, it's really enjoyable to mentor someone and to guide them through the process of stepping in the first time. Um, and yeah, using all the experience that I've been through to be able to build a, you know, we'll call it a small business, if you will, because um, I don't coach a whole lot of guys, so I don't have time to do it. But it's just, it's really fun to be able to translate those skills and pass that knowledge on as well. Yeah, I always like the whole concept of like coaching you because it's kind of like you can like like give them success, but it's also kind of like success for you too. Yeah, I mean, I've had, so I don't know if you guys know this now, so I have a coach, Johnny Shreve, um, who I actually met when I was in university. Uh, so I've been working with him um, for several years now. 
Um, and I watched him progress as a professional bodybuilder. So he is an IFBB pro. Um, and, you know, he's worked with, you know, the fanciest coaches around the world. That knowledge comes down to him and then it comes down to me. So it all just kind of slowly always trickles down. So yeah, exactly. guys that I work with, I'm able to provide all this knowledge from all these other coaches too as well. And that's a good thing because it's like, instead of just taking the knowledge and kind of being selfish and like, okay, I'm going to use this for myself. You can kind of like everybody learns, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. There's so many good tips and tricks out there. And there's so many people who are just, just wealths of great information um, that we should all try to take advantage of as much as we can. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of information out there that's like not necessarily right, like on social media. So like, it's awesome to, I mean, it's awesome that you said you feel, you feel good about it too, to put out good information and actually see results for people with your clients. And yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Like and a lot of the people, biggest thing, if you will, like, I'll just say this as an example, like, you know, an influencer will spit, oh, use this fat burner, this protein powder, this is how I look. And like, literally people walk in my store and I tell them, how's your diet and exercise going? Is it add any good? Because you can buy all this stuff, but nothing's going to happen. Like, it's just being transparent about those kind of things, which may hurt you is and they're not going to spend money immediately, but down the road, it's going to lead to actual real value to them because they're actually going to make a change in their life and respect that you told them the truth. And that's that's really respectful because sometimes I'll go into some supplement stores and there's like oh buy this buy this and it's like well like this might work but it's not really going to affect if you don't have the two variables yeah and I take it my personal experience my first time in a supplement store I was 15 years old I walked into my local GNC and like I said I was as tall as I am now but I was 140 pounds and I told the guy I was like I want to get big and he gave me a bottle of creatine and a bag of mass gainer and I ate them both and didn't realize that I didn't get any bigger and wondered why. Well, it's because you need 17 bottles of creatine, 17 bottles of mass gainer and 10 years of training to, for it all to add up over time. Exactly. So it's yeah. just like just tweaking your words a little bit and making people understand that it's not instant gratification. It's also. Yeah, I agree. I, I think that's sometimes an awesome thing, like with people just getting in and listening, like sometimes people are kind of looking for like a quick fix, like, oh, I want to do things quick, but it, it does honestly just take time. Yeah. And you can't compare yourself to someone else either. Some guy might, you know, make progress at this rate. Some guy may make progress at this rate. And it's, it's so tricky to be able to kind of perceive yourself in a way, if you're not going as fast as someone else would, it's, it's so, there's so many factors that determine. how. Exactly. Yeah. And one thing about that, I feel like even because I've compared myself, I mean, we all have, but I often find myself comparing myself to people and I, it's, it's almost like demotivating. It's almost like it's not like oh I want to work hard. It's like no, like oh, I'll never be that big or something like that. Yeah, I mean uh, you know if you use you know examples, I'm 28 years old. Um, you know everyone knows Chris Bumstead, right? Chris Bumstead yeah, yeah. is a year younger than I am. We're the same height, but he's you know 20, 30 pounds heavier, three time Mr. Olympia. So it's like oh, why am I not that? I'm older than him. I should you know what I mean? So you can't. Uh, it's hard to wrap your head around not being able to compare yourself to things like that because certain people are just meant to be at the pinnacle because of the hands they were dealt and the genetics they have. I agree. And that's why I think it's sometimes tough for like bodybuilding because it's like kind of the whole sport of bodybuilding is like you're comparing yourself to people, but really it's just like you got to be the best that you can be. Yeah. Yeah. And there's so different, so many different variables too. Like it's not, there's genetics, there's like how much you're eating, like what, how high are you training? And people don't really realize that. And like you said earlier, like, Someone like I'm not, I don't like someone like Greg Ducet or something might say like buy my cookbook and then you're like okay and you think that if I if you buy the cookbook you're just gonna get big or you're gonna exactly. lose weight or something but people understand like people ask me like should I take creatine I'm like like man you're not gonna get big without working out like you can't just take creatine yeah. and get big but yeah. there's so much misinformation out there and you're gonna walk into supplement king and some people tell you like buy this fat burner and you lose weight and people don't really tell you like I like how you said you're going to tell them like what's up you're going to be honest with them and at the end of the day that's going to get you more sales because like yeah. it's going to better your reputation and people are going to yeah. trust you rather than just saying buy this yeah. buy these amino acids or something you're going to get huge because that's not how it works but yeah absolutely no it's, it's just it's the way it should be I, that's the way i feel it should be yeah, exactly. um, and it's translated itself into good results for me so i'm going to continue to do so so what was the what was, um, you're talking about yeah so what do you think like how much do you eat in a day? Like, obviously, don't sure. go in like super off, off season and then like prepping. Yeah. So for me, um, I'd say right now, I so my job is relatively active, meaning I'm standing on my feet all day long, um, moving around, running around, talking to people. Um, I probably eat anywhere from five thousand to fifty-five hundred calories myself. Yeah. 
Um, so I'm, like I said, six, two ish, 200. I haven't weighed myself in a couple of weeks, but I'm probably about 255 first thing in the morning. So probably 260 ish before I go to bed. Um, so, you know, there's, there's all kinds of philosophies about what is needed to build muscle. And, you know, you talked about Greg a second ago, but you know, you would assume, you know, about his main gaining process. I mean, some guys say you need to eat like a maniac and get super fat in order to build muscle. Um, I know this is kind of taking a bit of a tangent from your initial question, um, but I just want to say if you, I want people to eat in a way that they like what they see in the mirror. So if your goal is to get bigger and stronger and you want to be fat and you don't care about not having ab abs, great. But if you don't like what you see in the mirror, if you do lose your abs, then tone it back a bit. Um, and then, yeah, we'll touch on the initial question. Sorry. Um, so throughout the day, I mean, I've, I have about six meals ish. Um, in my off season, I probably have a cheat meal every other day. Um, so, you know, I eat my breakfast. Usually it's a couple egg sandwiches in the morning or a couple egg wraps or a giant bowl of yogurt and berries and peanut butter and a couple of peanut butter sandwiches, um, or I make a smoothie. Um, I eat a ton of salmon. I love salmon. So some of my favorite simplest meals are simply just salmon, basmati rice or white rice and vegetables, um, lots of steak. Um, and then, uh, it's pretty consistent with usually a bunch of Greek yogurt and casein protein at night. Um, and my cheat meals, I mean, uh, you, if you guys follow me on Instagram, usually every Saturday night. I love the Domino's yeah. pizza. <laughs> yeah, I have, a, I have a Domino's pizza pretty much every Saturday night, but my cheat meals, usually I like burgers, I like sushi. Um, and then when we get into contest prep, um, basically it's just the cheat meal stop and we reduce calories slightly because I'm fortunate that I can lose weight quite easily. So I just reduce my calories relatively slightly. And usually that's just dropping those cheat meals. And then the weight just starts to come down. Yeah, I think that's one, like you often see when people start to cut, I think a lot of people start to cut, like cut or prep, like started like way too dramatically. Like you really don't want to like, like when you're cutting or prepping, you really just want to change as little as you can. You know what I mean? Exactly. Control, control the variables, do as little as possible to try to achieve as much as possible. Um, you know, if I go from eating 5,500 calories a day to 3,000, well, obviously I'm going to lose weight, um, but my appetite would be through the roof. My cravings are going to be crazy. Exactly. You know, it, it's just, we don't want to drop that much. And also the weight loss is going to happen too fast where you're potentially risking you also burning muscle. muscle. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And you're saying it earlier, I think at the, end of, at the end of the day, if you look in the mirror and you don't like what you see, then what's the point of working out? So like some people, like you said, these huge bulks, these dirty bulks, and it's like, at the end of the day, like they're fat and they're like, what am I doing? And like, exactly. you know, I don't think you have to do a bulk and cut, like a lot of us do, but like uh, a big thing about like main gainings out there right now. And like that, like allows you to see, keep your abs the whole time, but keep like slowly putting on mass. And yeah. I don't, I don't think a lot of people like do that. I don't think a lot of people know about it, but I mean, at the end of the day, if you don't like what you see in the mirror, you might as well not even work out. Yeah. So. To me, yeah. To me, that's the biggest thing is being, being able to like how you look and like how you feel. And to some guys, maybe that is, they want to look like Eddie Hall when he was 400. Yeah, exactly. you know what I mean? And that's fine. And that's dandy. I mean, I would also hope that you're trying to be healthy, as healthy as you can be at that yeah, weight yeah. as well. And if that's the look you want to go for, go for it. But for me, it's just about what do I see and do I like what I see? I totally agree. I think it's like, like, you don't have to hate yourself just to like yourself again. Like you can really, I mean, maybe you're a little, like, maybe if I was going to, maybe if I'm like both and I'm like, maybe I'm not as lean as I would love to be. But like I still like what I see. I, I'm not yeah. like growing like a big bear on just looking horrible, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And another thing, like when you're cutting, you're talking about that. So you don't have to eat chicken and rice for every meal. Like you can be flexible. Yeah. People like people when they think about cutting, they think about salmon and rice or chicken and rice and broccoli. And it's like you don't have to be like that. You can you can eat not cheat meals, but you can eat like more interesting foods. Exactly. And as yeah, long as you get your calories and your protein and your macros, it doesn't really matter. Like at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't necessarily live by a, if it fits your macros approach where you could eat just, you know, gummy bears yeah. and candy. Yeah, okay. There's a balance uh, between the two. Yeah. But I mean, it's, you know, for the average person who just wants to lose a little bit of weight, you can absolutely have some diversity in your diet. Um, if we're going to take it to the whole other end of the spectrum and when it's someone who's getting ready for a show and you're two weeks out from a show, well, quite frankly, just for consistency's sake, I'm going to make you eat the exact same thing every day. So yeah. That, we know how your body is reacting to all the foods that are coming in, but that's just a different scenario and that's not everyone. But for the average person, you know, you can eat pasta, you can eat this, you can eat bread and still lose weight. I know it blows people's minds sometimes yeah. when I hear that. Um, but I'm pretty sure I know there's no bread in my um, fridge right now, but, you know, usually I have some. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, yeah, I'm the same way. Like, I mean, I eat basically the same thing every single day, but like, it's still fun foods. Like, it's not like yeah. I'm eating like Greek yogurt and, and yeah. if I'm having like beef and pasta, I'll, I'll put a little pasta sauce in there. Like, just things that make it enjoy. It doesn't have to suck. Yeah. I mean, unless you're two weeks ahead, obviously. <laughs> yeah. I mean, once you're doing a show, it's like a different extent. Like, you have to obviously dial in on what you're eating. But if you're just, yeah. if you're not doing a show and you're just doing it to get bigger and like look better, exactly. then you don't have to be eating perfect. Because at the end of the day, if you're eating like perfect, like chicken, rice, and broccoli for every meal, it's not going to be sustainable. Like you'll do it for a no, couple of weeks. It's not, it's not at all. You know, you, you could do that for a couple of days before you yeah. need something else. You know, yeah. I, I, I one of my meals today is probably going to be two protein bars, right? Yeah. You know, 45 ish, 50 grams of protein. That's fine. That's great. That's a great meal, you know, in 20 yeah, and, and it's enjoyable for you. So. Yeah. So let's just chop the bar, you know? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And like you said earlier, if someone wants to be Eddie Hall, they want to be like super strong and they don't care what they look like. I respect it. I respect it either way. But I mean, at the end, like if you want to look good and you want to like be strong as well, then it's all about being like consistent, but also being diverse with what you're eating. So you can, so yeah. it's sustainable because if it's sustainable, then it's yeah. good for you. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think it's just like, like, you know, you got to decide where your goals are. If your goal is just to look a little better and feel a little better, then sure. You can have some fun foods in there if you, if you're yeah. trying to age lean then maybe not but it just kind of depends yeah. where you want yeah. to be yeah you can drink your beer on the weekends and enjoy yeah. <laughs> yourself a little bit too right it's not that it's not that serious sometimes yeah I mean, when you restrict yourself too it kind of puts the cravings through the roof a little bit too like absolutely. I don't, yeah i used to i mean back in the day this is before i did any research i was like chubby as like when i was younger and i was i, I did the carnivore diet i don't know if you ever heard about that i did that for <laughs> like a month and i felt like shit the whole time i mean i lost weight <laughs> But I also lost every yeah. single ounce of muscle in my body. I went to like, I was just oh, no. quick at that point. And that's, oh, no. that was unsustainable because I felt like garbage every day. And I would yeah. never suggest that to anyone else because I went through it because there's a big trend on social media. And yes, yeah. you're going to lose weight. But I mean, you have to feel good about yourself and you don't have to hate your life. Exactly. Yeah, totally. Once it gets to the point where you're like, why am I even doing this? Like, I have to enjoy myself. So, yeah. yeah. And I think one thing, a lot of people like, We'll start going to the gym and they'll be in the gym for like six months and they're like, Oh, I gotta do a cut. It's like, no, you don't you don't really no. need to do a cut anymore. No, no, just just train for whatever you try. Now I will kind of put an asterisk to that. I mean, you know, sure if the person go if we go back to what they're seeing in the mirror and if they did get too fat because yeah. they started. Yeah, for sure. for sure. But but ultimately it's 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 gonna potentially hinder your progress if all of a sudden, no, oh, I'm in six months and I want to suddenly reduce calories drastically. Well, it makes it very tough to build muscle when you're in a deficit too. So Exactly. Yeah, I mean, a, that's basically exactly what I did. I was like, I was like working out for like a year. I had a little bit of progress. And I was like, oh, I got to do a cut. And I was eating like 1500 calories a day. And I felt like awful. And, and, I was just like, Man. and then now I look back and I'm eating like basically double that. And I'm like, I feel so much better. And it's just, yeah. it's way more sustainable too. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, if you go into the gym, like and you're like overweight and you want to lose weight, then obviously you can do a cut. Yeah. But sure. if you're like starting and relatively skinny, I wouldn't do a cut for a while. I mean, I mean, as long as you like what you see in the mirror, you don't have yeah. to be caught because like yeah. the first year you're getting like newbie gains and stuff. So from my perspective, I mean, like I said, I was quite thin. Well, I, I mean, I felt like I was, I was quite thin. Um, so I wish someone would have told me, you know, when I was 14, 15, 16, 17, just eat more. Like exactly. I'd always, my mom would always go, oh, Taylor, you eat so much. Oh, you, you're, you're, spending, you're making me spend so much money on food. It's like, no, <laughs> shut your mouth. Make me eat more, you know, yeah. <laughs> like stop. So if, if there's any advice I do have for kids who are hard gainers, if you will, um, or young guys, just eat food, eat food and eat more food. And your wallet's not going to like you, but there's cheap ways to do it, but just eat more food. Yeah, that's, that's exactly um, like my opinion too. Like if you can, the more you can eat, I mean, obviously to a certain point, but like if you can just power in the food, you're going to get big either way. Yeah. Just to that's what differentiates between like the new people that actually are eating and the new people that are just going to the gym, but they're not doing the stuff outside the gym because eating yeah. is like a big percentage of what, 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 like your body is, like needs to grow. So eating like, is 95% of kind of any fitness goal, if you will. Like if our goals, the three of us was to lose weight, we could sit on the couch for the next two weeks and not move at all. And still lose weight if yeah. we consume less calories than what it takes for us to exist. So it's it's something that it's something that I kind of always try to really hammer home. It's ultimately the food is the biggest result of how you're going to achieve your goal, and and everything else is necessary. But the stuff you put in your old face hole is what's going to make the biggest difference. Yeah, 
Absolutely. And I, I think it's like people are like, oh, I'm I'm training super hard. I'm not grown. It's like, well, because you're not eating. Like you could train, you could be the hardest trainer in the world, and then you don't eat yeah. anything. Well, it's not gonna yeah. work. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like people and people underestimate how much you have to eat. Like if you're a hard gainer, people are like, oh, I'm eating more, but like you gotta eat a lot of food. Like, mm-hmm. especially if you can't, if you're like, oh, I can't gain weight, you can't. You just gotta hammer yeah. food in you. Yeah. yeah. yeah absolutely. Like your body doesn't really want to get huge, right? And it's like you got you got to force it a little bit for sure. Yeah. The last thing I kind of want to touch on is like, as a New Brunswick, someone from New Brunswick, was it hard to get into the bodybuilding, like into the competitions? No, I'm actually not originally from New Brunswick. Um, so I grew up in a small town in Nova Scotia called Yarmouth, Nova Scotia, oh, yeah. um, which would be I don't know what you'd call the equivalent to New Brunswick. I was gonna say 7, it's the equivalent. People. Yeah, it's it's a tiny little town of seven thousand people. Um, and then when I graduated high school, I moved to Halifax. Um, and I, and in Halifax, it was easy because I mean, it's, you know, the biggest, biggest town on the East coast, um, yeah. there's a huge fitness scene. Um, so I was fortunate to have that. Um, but I think in most of the, you know, call it bigger towns in New Brunswick, you know, in Fredericton, St. John and Moncton, um, even in the smaller places like Woodstock and stuff like that, there's still some decent, you know, fitness presence and there's still some bodybuilding presence within these communities if you're in the right gyms um i'm just trying to think of how many, I, there's at least at the gym the good life here that i train at mostly um in Fredericton, there's at least five other competitors you know yeah. consistent yeah. competitors if you will um that train at that gym um and if you're looking to get into it and you're younger um the canadian physique alliance is the the yeah we'll call it the a league federation it's the proper it's the best federation um, in Canada, if you want to actually progress in the IFBB, um, and on their website, there's always, um, you know, information for new athletes. There's, yeah, a, sure. there's a, there's a stage ready seminar, um, happening in Moncton in what's today's the 10th. I think it's happening next weekend, actually. Um, so there's always stuff like that, that local show promoters put on, um, to help bring knowledge and value yeah. to people who have never done a show before so that you can kind of get a perspective as to what's going on. Yeah, because I know there's like um the new brands are natural some somewhere's in July, I think. There's yeah, yeah, I've got a kid that uh that's doing that show. So that's happening in Moncton in July. Yeah. Yeah, I was kind of unfortunate. I don't know if you heard that rule that they passed, you have to be 18 or something. They yeah, just I uh I was so that upset. was a couple months ago. Yeah, they said now you have to be there's no more kind of uh, kids categories. It's yeah, you have to be 18 at minimum to to compete. So that actually, that young fella, I sent him that post literally the, the moment I saw it. I was like, you're going to be 18 by the time the show rolls around? He's like, yeah, my my birthday's like a week before that. Like, perfect. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, for me, I, I was going to do that show too. And then um, I just turned 17. So I, I saw the rule. I was like, oh, my God. But yeah. worst case scenario, I'm just going to, I'll just be bigger. So <laughs> it gives you time. Exactly. Gives you time. Yeah. And, and I mean, I'm going to kind of play a bit of a devil's advocate and say, I think that's a good rule to have um, yeah. because if you start introducing, you know, young men and women into this, this community where you're solely based on how you look, yeah. um, you start to, you could easily very quickly develop more body image issues than what you might already have. I agree. Um, you know, as young folks who are so malleable, you know, that's one, also another reason why I got into bodybuilding is like I said, I was tall and skinny. I hated the way I looked. So I wanted to be bigger. So if you're already, you know, 16, 17, trying to progress into a goal of being compared to the person beside you, exactly. the other person beside you, and then you start thinking, why was I not rewarded? It's, it can really play some mind games with you. Um, yeah. So I, I don't disagree with that rule by any means. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, so I, it's, it's an understandable rule. I mean, for sure it's disappointing, but I, I see where they're coming from, especially if you have like, you know, like a 13 year old kid or something he's competing and obviously yeah. that's not even health like, I was gonna like, say, healthy, healthy, like to a is unfortunate and then also just the mental like they probably they don't have the mental tools to work through like a loss or like anything like that no and i mean even from if i put in my own perspective i was 20 i was 21 or 22 when i did my first show and you don't understand what happens when you put your body through such a calorie restrictive state you know you get down into the single digits of body fats and you're focused solely on this one goal of getting on stage, then when that day stops and you don't have the willpower to say no to that plate of brownies in front of you <laughs> and you eat the brownies, but then you eat the pizza. And then the next day you eat it, you go out for breakfast and you gain 25 pounds in five days. 
five days ago you were peeled on stage. Now yeah. today you look like a water buffalo. So it just <laughs> starts playing crazy games with your head. Um, so being able to be old enough and mature enough, not only physically, but mentally to be able to prepare yourself and understand that, oh, I can't do these things because I know it's going to mess me up is also another good thing that it also takes time and experience to, to go through that as well. Yeah, for sure. I, I fully agree because you need to have like, like if a kid, like let's say a kid, you know, went to do a show and then he loses and then he thinks, oh, I look really bad. I hate myself. That could be really like detrimental to you for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I think as unfortunate as for you, like yeah. if you want to do a show and stuff, I feel like it's almost better because like you said, it alters a lot of people's body images around here. Like for sure. it's a, already a huge thing. Like people struggle with their body image and, like as young kids, especially, like there's so many people that yeah. don't eat because the, the the norms of like they see these bodybuilders that are absolutely peeled, but they, but they don't understand that these bodybuilders are using like the best lighting, the best like they're perfecting the variables. Yeah. So these people yeah. are comparing themselves to this, and they're like, what the heck? And so yeah. I think it's almost better that like after 18, because I mean, and then and then again, when you're that young too, it's almost unhealthy. Like if you don't have enough mass, I've seen a couple people that did a show like that yeah. I knew, and they just didn't have enough mass to show. Like, it's like no it's, i feel like you're almost yeah you look almost anorexic if you will yeah, like, no, yeah it's not a good thing for a young person to do and you're limiting your potential too like if you're like yeah. you're still going through those the point where like it's as an adolescent it's easier to put on muscle so it's like you you're, gotta lose you're kind of in there. Yeah. yeah and i think it's always like a thing you have like as if you're a young child I, I would rather be bigger than like really skinny you know what i mean i would rather yeah at a, you know, at a healthy body fat level, that's, you know, allowing your body to grow and mature properly um, so that, you know, 10 years down the road when you are, a, you know, in your late 20s that you're like, oh, I'm glad I didn't do that and potentially damage anything. Exactly. Because, I mean, you, there's so many things you could damage. I mean, being in that calorie, calorie restrictive, like, state for too long could even hinder your growth. I was going to say, when I did the camera, I'm, I'm almost scared that that actually took <laughs> quite a couple of inches. I'm, I'm swear. I mean, I'm probably seven. not, but I mean, if, probably you, if did. you do this, stay short, blame your parents, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, my dad's 5'9", <laughs> I'm 5'7", so I mean, it's not, not a huge difference, but I know it's not healthy. Like, I mean, if you're limiting yourself to that many calories, because I feel like at our age, too, like, at least when you're cutting, it's you're not eating about 1,500 calories. I feel like when you're, what are you, when you're cutting, what's your normal calories? Like, I mean, like when you're getting close, it's to different weight. every time. But this last show, I mean, to be quite honest, I don't know because I don't calculate them. Yeah. Like it's just, yeah. kinda, I would spitball around maybe yeah, three thousand ish. I was yeah. probably down to like literally, and then of course, peak week's a different animal. Um, but yeah, going into it is probably the lowest I got down to would have been three thousand ish. No, but yeah. that's all relative to the person too, right? Another yeah, guy my size yeah, yeah. might have to eat half of that in order to get ready for a stage. So. Yeah. Um, but for me, like I said, I'm pretty lucky that I can just, you know, eat a little bit less and watch the weight fall off. Yeah. And I, and I think that's another thing, like a little kid, like, let's say there's a kid who's like a hundred pounds and you're trying to cut, like, he's going to be eating like a thousand calories, maybe. And it's like, that can't be, you know, can't be yeah. Yeah. you're probably not getting all the nutrients you need. No, no exactly. exactly. Yeah. And some of those diets, when you're like restricting yourself, you're just not getting the nutrients your body needs. And you just feel like garbage. And like exactly. you said, you're going to damage something to damage you get. And yeah. your growth, you can understand that. Because I mean, it's one thing when you're a fully, like a fully, like developed, developed person versus when you're always still developed, still trying to develop. Yeah. So honestly, I think that's yeah, probably, that's probably a wrap. And it's like, I mean, it's awesome to have you on. Yeah, thanks chat. for coming on, man. I really yeah. appreciate no it. No problem, fellas. Anytime. Okay. Thank All you. Right, thank you. Awesome, guys. Bye.